is Shelly, one of the open trainers here. I'm also joined by Jessica, who's out in front of the puppy chat right now. And uh, right now we're just uh, spending some time out here. The elephants, majority of them are down the other end of the habitat. And what we do every day is basically change their environment. And uh, if you ever happen to walk by and see a lot of the trainers setting up the habitat, bringing out toys, bringing out brows, bringing out fruits and vegetables for the elephants. Uh, we just have interaction every day, approximately around 1.30, quarter to 2. We'll ask the elephants to go inside the barn area, and then we'll spend some time out here basically changing their environment. So the other elephants are spending a lot of time eating everything that we just put out for them about a half hour ago, uh, destroying everything, knocking out toys, uh, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables that we've hidden around the habitat. Carnaudi's decided to come over here and investigate and check everybody out. Uh, this is Carnaudi. She's 23 years old. Uh, she's the youngest member of the herd. Even though she's an adult, she's still treated as a baby. Uh, her mom is also in the herd. Uh, her mom is Karina, who's 42 years old. Uh, we also have Rosie out there in the front, who's 44. Uh, we also have Tina, who's 45. And then we also have one more elephant, Simba, who's still inside our barn facility right now. Um, these are all Asian elephants. Uh, the average life expectancy for an elephant is probably about 45 to 50, uh, but they can live a lot longer than that. Uh, we had an elephant, unfortunately, she passed away in 2008. She lived to be 66. And the oldest elephant on record to date so far that we know of is 89. So they do have the capability of living in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, these are all females, and this is very normal and natural to see when you see a herd of elephants probably going to be females. Uh, they live in matrilineal matriarchal groups, meaning they are a female-dominated group, and there is one leader, and it's always a female. Uh, when males are born into the herd, the males will stay with the females until they reach about sexual maturity, which is about their early to mid-teens, and the females start pushing out those males. So either they will find other older bulls to roam with, uh, or they will create their own bachelor herds. <laughs> now the males do come in contact with the females for socialization, they might roam with the females for a little bit, but they're pretty much off on their own. The, the older males, the biggest, the strongest males, will fight each other for the breeding rights of the females. Uh, so they really come more in contact with the females for breeding purposes, but for, sometimes they will for socialization as well. But when you see a large herd of elephants, it's probably going to be females. Uh, so these are Asian elephants. The other type of elephant is the African elephant. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to tell the difference between Asian and African elephants. Uh, the quickest way is by their ear size. Uh, Asian elephants have the smaller ears, African elephants have the bigger ears. Uh, you can see right now how Carnot is swapping those ears back and forth a little bit. Uh, that's how they keep themselves cool. So it's a lot hotter in Africa than it is in Asia. Uh, so those African elephants need those bigger ears to help keep them cool. Another difference is the, the trunks here. And you can see as Carnot is uh, extending her trunk out a little bit, the very tip of their trunk, there's a bigger like appendage that sticks out. Uh, that is the characteristic of the Asian elephant. The bottom part is more flat, they are more grazers, so they'll pull grasses out of the ground. African elephants are more browsers. They actually have two of those fingers at the toe of their trunk, so they will actually pull leaves off the tree branches. Uh, another difference is tusk size. A lot of you are probably wondering why you not see tusks on these elephants, but they all have them. And, uh, excuse me, the Asian species, the females have very short tusks, so they're going to be harder to see. They will grow them as long as they want, but the males are the ones that have the really long extended tusks. With the African species, both the males and females have long prominent tusks. Another difference is coloration. You can see here, Carnati has a very unique freckling look on the front of her face. It goes down the bottom of her trunk, to the tips of the ears, the front of the legs. And this is a physical feature where each one is different, so it's almost like a fingerprint to each one of them. For the rest of the body, it's more of a charcoal gray color. Uh, African elephants do not have this pigment or the speckling look, they're on one solid mustard brown color. And you'll also notice how dirty the elephants are. Uh, we believe here that a dirty elephant is a happy elephant. <laughs> if you've ever seen a very clean elephant before, because usually the person that's with them wants them clean. It's not so much the elephant. Uh, they have hair in their body. You can see here on Carnality. It's very thin. It's very spread out. It really doesn't protect them from anything. Uh, so what they do is what's called dusting or mudding. And it's actually growing dust and dirt and mud on themselves. And it's a good sunscreen, it's a very good bug repellent. So they like to be dirty, we let them be dirty as much as they want. Now Asian elephants are more semi-aquatic, they spend a lot of time in lakes and rivers. Um, so they do spend a lot of time in the water, but they don't stay clean for very long. So again, they like to be dirty. Now if you've been here before, uh, and watched us interact with the elephants, or spent some time with us, uh, you get a lot of opportunities to see a lot of our, our training sessions. Uh, we're very proud of our program here at Bush Gardens because we utilize 100% positive 
and reinforce the trait. So your complete opposite of traditional elephant management, and that in traditional elephant management, they use dominance and punishment to control their elephants. Basically, the elephant never has a choice set up. Here, everything is choice-based. Everything is voluntary for the elephant. It is part of choice to be here.